Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be with each and every one of you, dear, amazing, and brilliant listeners. This is Hussam al-Din Alam welcoming you to a new episode of the informative and intellectually engaging Halal Hub podcast. At the very beginning of this episode, I'd like to express my appreciation and heartily felt gratitude to all the members who were keen to send their comments, feedback, and questions. And this is the reason why, as a matter of fact, I have decided to dedicate this episode and the upcoming ones to providing the answers to your very important and very significant questions. As a matter of fact, a sizable number of the questions that have been received have to do with the concept of halal. That's they seek to attain and acquire a better understanding of what is meant by halal in Islam and what is the significance of the term or the concept of halal when used by the Muslim scholars. Well, to better understand the full picture, I need to tell you that here this point relates or has to do with rulings in Islam or the rulings as far as the Islamic fiqh or Islamic jurisprudence is concerned. And when we look into Islamic fiqh or Islamic jurisprudence, we find that essentially, according to the majority of the Muslim usuli scholars, there are five types of rulings. There are five types of rulings that relate to the actions of the accountable Muslim. In other words, when it comes to do's and don'ts in Islam, we have basically five types of rulings. I will mention them briefly at the beginning and then I will elaborate and explain each and every one of them in more details. The first type of rulings is that which is fard or wajib or obligatory. The second type is that which is mandub or mustahab or recommended. The third type is that which is haram that which is unlawful, that which is prohibited. The fourth type is that which is makru, that which is disliked and reprehensible. The fifth and the final type here is that which is mubah or halal or permissible. With that in mind, Let's now take a deeper look into each one of the previously mentioned rulings. The first is that which is wajib or fard or obligatory. This, as a matter of fact, signifies the acts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and instructed Muslims to do or to perform. Thus, these acts, when done, the believer will be rewarded. However, when these acts are disregarded or overlooked or neglected, the one who does so will be subject to blame worthiness and punishment in the hereafter by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as examples of 
that which is obligatory or that which is fard and wajib, uh, we have uh, the five obligatory uh, daily uh, salat or prayers and uh, observing the fasting of the month of Ramadan and uh, giving or providing zakat or the poor dues. The second is mandub or mustahab or sunnah that's recommended. This denotes the acts which are rewarded but not punishable for their omission, such as uh, smiling at people. This is recommended and actually highly recommended. Also, we have, for instance, uh, initiating uh, salam or the greeting of salam, and that's by saying assalamu alaikum uh, when we meet uh, someone. Uh, also, when it comes to uh, removing harm uh, from uh, the street, this is also another highly uh, recommended act. So, these are examples of that which is highly recommended or that which is recommended. The third is haram or mahvur or prohibited and unlawful. This denotes the acts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared to be unlawful and prohibited. Accordingly, those who leave them and stay away from them or abstain from committing them or falling into them will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, those who engage in them or fall into them will be blameworthy and punishable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For instance, uh, we have uh, oppressing others or having uh, an illicit sexual intercourse or consuming alcohol. All these are examples of acts or doings that are haram or prohibited. The fourth is that which is makru or disliked or reprehensible. This denotes those acts that Islam urges the believers to avoid and to stay away from. Those who avoid them will be praiseworthy and rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who fall into them or those who do them will not be subject to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such acts of makruh include fiddling with one's fingers during the prayer, for instance. The fifth is that which is mubah or halal or permissible. This denotes those acts that are neither forbidden nor recommended. They are rather neutral and thus subject to neither reward nor to punishment. And they include acts like eating, uh, drinking and talking and playing sports. However, let me tell you a very important point here and that's through the intention of the Muslim, they can be rewarded for conducting or carrying out an act that's halal and that's when they have the sincere intention to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for instance, if my intention uh, when I eat is to have the power and the energy uh, to to do my job and to carry out my duties towards my spouse and towards my family, with doing so, what is mubah becomes rewardable because here we have a coupled intention that moved this act from being merely neutral into an act 
that is rewarded as it is intended to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In view of what is previously mentioned, now we have a better understanding of what is meant by halal or permissible or mubah. So when we say this transaction is a halal one, i.e. it is one that is not prohibited, it is one that is not haram and in addition to this, it is one that is free of any quality uh, of being makro or disliked uh, or reprehensible. And this is very important. And we will see, for instance, in the upcoming uh, episodes, how is it? it is very vital to ensure that when the believer or when the Muslim is uh, engaged uh, in a transaction is that it is one that is free from and it does not involve any form of exploitation uh, of the need of any other human being with this we come to the end of this episode please feel free to share your questions feedback comments and suggestions and kindly remember to share the episode with everyone else so that they can benefit from the content and finally remember to kindly subscribe to the channel so that you stay updated this is me Hussam Din Alam and this is the Halal Hub podcast until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh